Good morning. Same news for this one. Um, Boric, Sermon and Charlie going to be in the squad for this one. Boric, um, <coughs> we felt, excuse my voice, could, could have been available last week. Unfortunately, missed out. He's improving, um, but we'll wait and see. Um, Sermon's had a slight setback, just feeling a little bit of discomfort in his hamstring, so we've had to back off him. He won't be available. And Charlie's another one that we have to make a late decision on. Any other fresh injury concerns? Not that I can think of. It's Liverpool, it's quite a match. Um, it's on Sunday. Bournemouth on Sunday played eight, lost eight in the Premier League. Is that a coincidence or what's happening? Yeah, I don't know what that's all about. Um, <laughs> it's a strange one, isn't it? I mean, yeah, may, maybe getting used to playing on a Sunday is something we're going to have to do a little bit better. You know, we've uh, the results have been disappointing. Uh, you know, you look at the performance last week, the performance last week was, was good, so there's no problems there. Hopefully our fortunes will change. You've never beaten Liverpool before. Um, how realistic is beating them on Sunday, do you think? Well, it's going to be tough. There's no doubt about that. I think they're a very good team. Um, but why not? You know, we were close to Arsenal last week. I don't think it's going to be a dissimilar game to that one, uh, the quality of the opposition we're up against. So we're at home. We'd like to think we're competitive here and we'll give it a, a very good go. Jack's had a rest. Um, this is exactly the kind of big game that you got him for, isn't it? You know, show his class in a match like this. He must be really up for this one. Yeah, well, he's obviously frustrated to miss out last week, another two week break for him, especially on the back of the international break. Um, so, yeah, we're keen to, to see what Jack can do in games like this, like we, any game really. I um, thought we performed very well without him last week, um, but I think he's got obvious qualities that we'll, um, we'll try and utilise. What about Jordan Ibe, a record signing from Liverpool? Um, what's your assessment of what he's done here so far and how much more to come is there from him? I think there's so much more to come. I think the potential of the player is, is limitless, um, technically, athletically, I think he's excellent. He has things to learn. He's only 20 years old. We have to be patient with him. I've said that before in previous interviews. But I believe, um, yeah, he could make a real difference for us in the Premier League, uh, given time. As you say, he's only 20. Should Bournemouth have expected maybe a bit more than they've seen so far? I think every player is different. You know, p people take a little bit longer than others sometimes to settle in, to get used to the way of working, to get used to the team. I think we've seen... You know, you can make a lot of statistics and, and everything like that around the player, but I think we've seen a lot of good things from him. Maybe not on a consistent basis, and I think for any young player, that's always the challenge to um, to turn the, the moments of brilliance into more consistent um, match-winning uh, efforts. Looks like Lallana might be back in action for Liverpool. I think your path's crossed here. What are your memories of Lallana at Bournemouth? Uh, yeah, talented player. I mean, uh, aware of him as a, as a young player. Um, we, we took him on loan, I think, way back under Kevin Bond. And, yeah, you could see technically very, very good off both feet. Had, had all the tricks that you need. Um, very creative eye, very good passer of the ball. Moves very well. So, um, no, I've been an admirer of his for a long time. And um, I hope not to see him on Sunday. And Jurgen Klopp, Eddie, was calling you the most exciting young manager in the Premier League earlier this this year. You know, looking at the start of their season, it looks like Klopp's rejuvenated Liverpool first full season as you made them genuine contenders again for the, for the Premier League? Yeah, I think they're genuine contenders for sure. I think um, he's benefited from having a full pre-season. You know, it's very difficult when you come in midway through the season uh, to affect the players like you want. But I think that pre-season was key and um, with no fixture congestion for him, he's been able to, to work on the training pitch and I think that's been evident in seeing them play. So um, full of admiration for their philosophy, how they play. Um, it's very evident when you watch them, they have a clear identity, so um, it's going to be a tough one for us. Just a couple of final points. Callum Wilson is being linked again with West Ham this week. Papers saying £25 million. If West Ham come to Bournemouth with that kind of money next month, what do you say? Well, that's the first I've heard of it, so um, we'd say not for sale. Okay. Um, just on Southgate yesterday, of course, appointed by England, the FA have used a psychologist in the selection process. I knew, now you've got a psychologist here. Can you just say why psychology in football is so important? I think psychology, not just in football, but in any, any walk of life, is so, so important. It can be very much underrated or people are fearful for to, to talk about it. But um, you tell me where psychology doesn't have an impact in whatever job, profession, you know, it, it has a massive impact. So I've got no problem with that. How do you feel, though, that your man has helped the team in the Premier League? Say again. How do you feel that your psychologist has helped the team? Well, no, it's, it's not a case of helping the team. It's about helping individuals reach their full potential. I think that's 
that's the key push for us. And if you can help every individual reach their their, their maximum levels, then the team's going to benefit. So I've said before, football players are human beings. They have the same worries, concerns that we all have about life and, in, and, and other things. So if you can help them ease worries, problems, they go onto the pitch with a clearer head and a better position to perform. And just finally on Gareth, now rubber stamps. Good news, young English manager in charge. I think it's a great appointment. I think it's the right appointment. You consider he's worked with the 21s now for a period of time. He's got that international experience, the tournament um, experience as well. He conducts himself in a really nice way and his team's played good football. So, yeah, I think it's a, a really good thing. And I think the fact he's been given a four-year contract as well, he's been given time, is so important as well. Morning, Eddie. Good morning. Liverpool have only lost one in their last 17 matches. How do you approach this game on Sunday? We approach it in our way. I mean, I don't think you can look at things like that and, and worry the players with it. They're a good team, no doubt about that. But uh, we have to believe in ourselves and our game plan. We're going with a, a way of trying to win, and then it's up to us to execute that. Is it tough for you as a manager to approach a game like Liverpool, who are on such a good run, fighting for the Premier League title? Do your, your backroom staff get together and sort of try and unpick a way of, of, of sort of beating them? Um, I think it's a great a great game. I think it's a great challenge. I think that's how we have to look at it. There's no fear in our in our minds. Um, I always say when you look at the journey this club's been on, and we, we do rem have to remind ourselves at times when you're preparing to play an Arsenal or a Liverpool, you think that what we'd have done to uh, to do that a few years ago when we were playing different teams in, in League One and League Two. So no, we take this kind of game and this kind of pressure and this kind of environment to uh, hopefully excel and, and do ourselves proud. Talking about remembering where you've come from, you celebrated 300 Bournemouth games as manager last week. Has this week you've spent a little bit of time perhaps looking back at the things that you've achieved and, and moments that you'll sort of remember and perhaps some you'll forget? What do you think, Mark? <laughs> do you think we've been sat there looking back? <laughs> Not a chance. Not a chance. I mean, the, the only time the 300 games is mentioned is when I'm sat here with you guys. So it's, it's very much a case of always of looking forward. Um, looking at the next game, looking at the next thing you can achieve together rather than looking back. That will be for when I'm somewhere, when I'm 70, 80 years old, if I make it that far, to look back then. And talking about the weekend, you've had a few selection dilemmas and a, a few potential headaches with players um, you know, playing well and, and, and causing you problems. How do you approach this game with Liverpool when you look at Adam Smith, who you played on the right-hand side, and Frano at right-back, and then obviously Jack potentially to come back into the squad? Again, have you got some difficult decisions to make? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think we have a, a couple of selection decisions to make this weekend. That's always a nice thing when you're when you're choosing players. Um, I thought all the players that played last week did very well. So, yeah, gonna have to leave leave a you know, couple out potentially. It's going to be difficult, but you know that's part of my job. One of the players who's been in your squad for the last couple of weeks, he's, he started both games and scored at Stoke. Nathan Ake, he scored against Liverpool last season for Watford. How pleased are you with the way he's slotted in and, and how patient he's had to be to get his chance? Yeah, last two games I think he's been excellent. He really has been so composed. He looked like he's played in this team for for years. Not you know, he's not come in for his first couple of appearances. So full credit to him for that. He's had to be patient. He's had to bide his time. Due to the form of the back four, no criticism of Nathan, it was more to do with the fact that the other guys had played well and I don't think deserve to be left out. So he's had to wait, he's had to sit and watch and train and he's had to train well and he, he has done and now he's taken his chance he's uh, he should be very proud of what he's done so far what do you make to Jurgen Klopp and, and the way he handles himself particularly in front of the media and he seems like the, the kind of manager you'd like to, to sit down with a glass of wine with after the game and, and, and talk to and learn from yeah no he's a real character I mean I've, I've met him a few times now and um, yeah he is he's he's engaging he's a clever guy and um you can see from the touchline he's very passionate about what he does. So it um, be nice to see him again. And finally, we're into December now. It's, it's always a busy month for football managers, footballers. How do you approach this next month and, and how key could it be in depicting what happens for the rest of the season? It'll be a key month for us as it will for, for many teams. I mean, the, the gap between top and bottom is so small. Very limited points. Um, the gap is tight, so we're going to have to make sure in the following... In the, the next few games that we try and pick up as many points as we can because it will dictate really where we go from here. Um, we've got some tough games to come, some great games to come. We're looking forward to the, the hectic schedule. We want to play and um, no better time 
than December to do that. 